did a one gum stick was five calories. Can somebody give me something from here? I think, okay, you're a little ahead of me. You're, you're actually doing the second part. I'm saying, you know how we did one stick of gum was five calories? I want that first. Can someone give me that part? 48 over X. Y'all keep giving me a fraction. Hold on. Remember how we wrote one stick equals five calories? This is not a fraction yet, right? You can create two fractions from this. I want this first. 300 uh, equals 9. 300 equals 9. Yeah. Okay, so let's think about that. 300 out of our, out of our sample 2, uh, sample 2 is equal to 9 tagged, right? Out of our sample 2. That's, a, that's an equivalence relation. There are 300 fish in the sample two. That's equivalent to nine that are tagged in sample two, right? So I can create two fractions out of that. You all agree? Okay. Is there another equivalence relationship that we have? We do, but it's kind of hard to see here. How many, how many were tagged in the first sample? So this is a second equivalence relationship. I have 48 tagged in the, in the second one. And how many fish are in that pop, were in that population? We don't know, right? We don't know. So this is going to be x, all right? This is what we don't know. x is equal to the um, total population. So when you, when you look at this, this sample one, the first sample we took was out of the entire population, right? Mm -hmm. So what we want to do here, this is different than any problem we've done. This is why I'm doing this problem, because it is different from, from everything we've done before this and students struggle with it. I'm going to set up a proportion where I'm going to do the population over the number tagged. So I could write this first one this way, 300 out of sample 2 over 9 tagged must be equivalent to the population of sample 2, or of the original uh, population over the number that are tagged. So all you, at the end of this, all you really need to understand is this. You have the sample population divided by how many were tagged. That proportion must be equal to the total, to total population divided by how many were tagged in the total population. These two ratios, proportions, should be e equal to one another. So if I were to ask you here to, to kind of take out, take out, um, all the, just imagine that these aren't here. Could you solve this equation? 300 over 9 equals x over 48. Could you just do that? Could you solve for x here? How would you solve for x? Multiply both, sides by multiply both sides by 48. And that would get rid of the fraction here. So multiply by 48 here. Multiply by 48 here. And when I multiply by 48, I'm going to do 48 over 1 on this side and just go across. So on my calculator, I will do that. So 48 times 300, and then divide that by 9, I get 1,600 equals x. So remember, x was the total population, right? x is our total population. So this should be the estimate for the number of fish in the lake. It is an estimate, though. We, this is definitely not, like, we don't know for sure. But we know that the proportions should be similar to one another. And therefore, we can estimate the, the population to be about 1,600.
All right, I'm going to let you, there's a problem I believe in the homework like this. I'll let you see if you can get that one. If you have questions over it, we can talk about it, you know, next class. All right, let's see where we are. I think this might actually be a good place to break. Let me just double check something here. Yeah, that looks like it. Homework for it. Yeah, all right, so that's where we're going to start. So yeah, let's take our break now. And uh, it's 12.06. We'll come back, let's just say at 12.20. We'll do a little extra break if that's okay with you. Any complaints about that? Gives you about 13 minutes. So 12.20 we'll resume. We'll do scientific notation and it'll be fun.
Okay, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's continue. We're going to be starting out with uh, scientific notation. And the whole idea behind scientific notation is it's just a different way of writing numbers. That's all it is. Okay. So, for example, the, the number we have here, 35 comma 400 comma 000, this is 35,400,000. <clears throat> Another way of writing that would be to realize that you have a decimal point here. And then what would happen if I multiply by 10? What would, what, would, um, what would this decimal point do if I multiply this by 10? So if, if I multiply this by 10, this number would get bigger or smaller? It would get bigger, right? It would get bigger. So if I multiply by 10, it would move this way, right? But if I divide by 10, it would go the other way, right? So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this number. So now, instead of having, what, one, two, three, four, five zeros, I have four zeros, right? That would be this number if I divided it by 10, yes? So <clears throat> imagine, let me do it this way. If I divide this by 10, it's not the same number, right? It's not the same number. But if I multiply by 10 at the same time, it is. So this is, this is the same. These would cancel, and this would be the original number, right? OK, but dividing by 10 is the same as moving this over that way, one place, right? So I'm going to divide by 10. There, I've divided by 10. But then I have to also multiply, I'm going to use this symbol, times 10. So do you see that this number right here is the same as that number there? So that number divided by 10, but then multiplied by 10. Hmm? No? No? OK. If you don't see it, then I'm trying to get you to see it. Um, let me do it this way. <clears throat> 34 million 500, uh, sorry, 35 million 400,000. All right, if I take this number and multiply by 10 over 10, do I change the number at all? Does this number change? Nope. 10 divided by 10 is 1, right? So this is the same number as the original number. Okay, so that is equal to this if we all agree on that. Now, if I actually do just this part, take that number and divide it by 10, it would move the decimal point one place this way. Is that OK? I'm asking. I would assume so. OK, so we could do it on our calculator, and, and we would see if we divide that by 10. As far, as far as my knowledge, with the 10, yeah. We would. Then that means we would have one less zero here, right? Mm -hmm. But if I divide by 10, I would have to also multiply by 10 in order for it to be the same number. So this part right here is that number, and then times 10 is this part. Well, that's the procedure for that? No, no, no. I'm just trying to see if you agree with this or not. You well, just I agree with that. Okay, all right. I'm getting confused. On okay, the yeah, I just want you to see that that's the same thing, right? Yeah. Now, what if I do that again? What if I just cover that up, and what if I divide this by 10 and multiply it by 10 again? So if I, if I divide it by 10, what happens? I lose one zero, don't I? but I have to multiply by 10 at the same time. So I'm going to have to multiply by 10, but then I already had a 10. And what is 10 times 10? 100, or you could say 10 squared, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the same as 3, 5, 4, 0, 0, 0 times 10 squared. And then I could do it again. Divide this by 10, multiply this by 10. And what happens? You lose another 0, don't you? 3, 5, 4, 0, 0, but now it's times 10 to the third. And you could continue this process, and you're essentially going to start marching this decimal point over and over. And what you do is to convert to scientific notation, you're trying to take a number and get it to the point where it's, <clears throat> where it's a single number with a decimal behind it. All right, so we're going to keep on dividing by 10, multiply by 10, divide by 10, multiply, and just do that until this decimal moves all the way to here. So at the, at the end of it all, if I started with the decimal point, well, let's do it here. 
If I wanted to move it over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, right? Then I'm going to have to divide by 10 seven times and multiply by 10 seven times, right? Yeah. So the way we can write this using a different notation, scientific notation, is to rewrite that as 3.54, and we don't need any more zeros, times 10 to the seventh. I mean, I could have just started by just telling you that. Look, if we want to rewrite it, we just move it seven places and then say times 10 to the seventh. But I'm trying to, under, trying to get you to understand that this right here is just doing this process of dividing and multiplying, dividing and multiplying over and over until we get a clean number like this times 10 to some power. So let's do the next one. <clears throat> next one's different. This time, your decimal point's here. And instead of moving your decimal point to the left seven times here, what we want to do is move this decimal point to the right until we get it behind this nine. That way we would have a number and then some stuff after the decimal. So how many places would I have to go to move it to the right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Mm -hmm. Nine places to the right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to write that as 9.876 times 10 to what power though? Negative, negative. power. Yeah. Why is it negative though? How many places did it, was it nine? Yeah. Nine? Why is it negative nine, not positive nine? Because we were going the other way, right? But think about it this way. What, what did I say we were doing here? We're starting with this number, we're dividing by 10, but then multiplying by 10, right? Divide by 10, multiply by 10. Divide by 10, multiply by 10. And this is every time we multiplied, right? Here we're doing the opposite. We're actually multiplying by 10 and then dividing by 10. Instead of dividing and multiplying, we're doing it the other way around. So we multiply by 10, divide by 10. Multiply by 10, divide by 10. So you need to understand that this right here really means 1 over 10 to the 9th power. That's what a negative exponent means. So we're actually doing 10 times 10 times 10 nine times, but in the denominator. So we're dividing it. So you don't need to understand all the mechanics behind it. I think what everyone really just needs to know here is if you move a decimal point to the left, then you're going to put times 10 to a positive number. If you move it to the right, it's time 10, times 10 to the negative. All right? that's, that's kind of like the cookie cutter way of learning it, but I'm trying to get you to understand that you're, you're actually multiplying or dividing by something. All right, we can go the other way around. If somebody gives us a number that's in... Um, scientific notation, we can go backwards. So what about this one? 2.32 times 10 to the sixth. If I want to convert that where it's in your standard numeric notation, I'm really, this is really multiplying by 10 six times, right? And every time we multiply a number by 10, it gets bigger. So that means the decimal point is going to move to the right six times. So this should be two, three, two, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I should put zeros in here and put a decimal point there. So that number is really, what, like 2,320,000? Okay, what about this next number? 5.2 times 10 to the negative three. To convert that over to a number without scientific notation, this time I move the decimal which way? Left. To the left because it's negative, and that's because you're dividing by 10 each time. <clears throat> and if you divide, <clears throat> numbers get smaller. So the decimal point goes this way. So I go one, two, three, I put zeros in the place where these uh, jump from one to another, and then five, two, and that's it. Now, why, why do we even need scientific notation? Like, what's the point? Yeah, you can have huge numbers that it's just a more condensed way of writing it, right? Because in, in chemistry and physics, numbers get really, really big. And so you don't want to sit there with a bunch of, you know, digits there. So this is just a condensed way. But there's also another reason. What if I asked you to multiply these two numbers, okay? So let's, let's start with this. What if I asked you to do uh, 2, 3, 2, what was it, 0, 0, 0, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, times uh, this one right here, when we converted it, was 0 0.0052. <clears throat> what if we wanted to multiply those? Of course, you could do that on your calculator, right? Okay, but in scientific notation, it's really this number times that number, right? Right? That's what that really is? So this right here means exactly the same as this. That number times that number is this number times this number. So if we do this in scientific notation, the way you can do it is first you just multiply those two together. So someone on their calculator multiply 2.32 times 5.2. Tell me what you get. 12.064. Okay, so that's what you do first. And then you look at this one and this one. And what you do is you add the numbers that are up top. So see how you have 6 here and you have negative 3 here? What would happen if you take 6 and add negative 3? That, that'd be 3, right? That's the same as positive 3. So what you're going to do here is put times 10 to the positive 3. Right, so there you're just taking these two and adding, and then these two you are multiplying. Now this is the answer, but it's not in scientific notation. Why is this not in scientific notation yet? You're supposed to have one digit before the decimal, so I need to move this this way, right? Okay, so if we're going to move the decimal to the left, 1.2064, then I'm going to have times 10 to what power? 4, right? Do you all agree? Why? Yes? Because we're moving a decimal point. If you're going from scientific notation, if you're in scientific notation, you want to move to the left by 1, then you're going to multiply by another 10 to make it move so you go to the fourth power. Why is it that we moved it by one again? This is why in the beginning I was trying to get you to see that if I want this to move here, I actually have to divide by 10, right? Okay. But if I divide by 10, I have to multiply by 10. Okay, but what I'm asking is why did you put that step in? Again? Oh, because scientific notation means you have to have a number, decimal point, and then whatever. It doesn't matter what else okay, is after that. Times 10 to something, okay? So you have to have a single number, then the decimal, not two numbers, then the decimal. Makes sense. Okay? So this, this right here, the way we multiply these, is a, it's not easier, but it's mechanically, if you have a bunch of these together, you can just look at all the numbers together, and they just add up all the powers, and you're done. It also works the same way with division. If you want to take, what if we were to take these two numbers and divide them? This is a little bit trickier, but what if I asked you to divide these two numbers? So take that number and divide it by that number. So what do you think you do? What do you think you do with these? On your calculator, right? What did we do when we multiplied the two? What did we do with those numbers that were out front? What did we do with those? <coughs> we multiplied them, right? So here we want to divide, so we get on our calculator and we divide. 2.32 divided by 5.2. And that gives me 0 0.446. I'm just going to stop at the next one. I'm going to round it. 0.4462. And then times 10 to what power, though? So how do we deal with these powers? When we were multiplying just a second ago, what did we do with the powers? We added them. So what do you think we're going to do if we're dividing? Subtract. subtract. So you actually have to take 6 and subtract from it what? Negative, negative 3. And 6 minus negative 3 is actually 6 plus 3, which is 9. Right? So this is going to be 10 to the ninth power. So when you multiply two numbers in scientific notation, you multiply the two numbers and you add the powers on the 10. When you divide two numbers in scientific notation, you divide the numbers 
and subtract. You do this one minus this one. Now, are we done? We are not done. We are not done because here, this is, um, we need a non-zero digit here. So we need to move this this way once, right? So that will become 4.462 times 10 to the, now this is the thing I think people get messed up with. Here, we move the decimal point left and our number grew, right? Here we're moving the decimal point to the right and so this number is going to shrink. It's going to come down to 8. All right. Now, in our, in our number system, we have standard units of measuring things. Right, if you want to go out and measure like the distance from that wall to that wall, you break out a measuring. measuring tape, right, and you measure it, and you can measure it in feet, you can measure it in inches, right? But those aren't the only systems of measurement that we have. So on this planet, human beings actually have two basic systems of measurement. We have the metric system, and we have the, what's the other one called? Imperial. So what, what are some of the uh, imperial ones that, that you know of? Inches, feet, inches, feet, yards, miles, gallons, okay, we can keep going all day. So if I want to measure the distance from that wall to that wall, I can measure it in inches, feet, yards, right? But in the metric system, what do they use to measure length? Kilograms of kilometers. Meter, right? So it's a meter. That's the basic unit of measurement in the, in the metric system. Meter. And that's representative of length. Right? That's your length, meter. Now, you can have kilometers, which is a different, and it's still meters, but it's, it's like scaled up. Just like inches and feet, they're related to one another, right? There's 12 inches and one foot. How many feet in a yard? Three. Three feet in a yard. How many feet in a mile? Anyone know how many feet are in a mile? 5,280. That's not important. What's important to understand is that to go from inches to feet is not, is not a simple conversion. In metric, everything is simple. It's just moving in decimal place. That's all that happens in metric. Everything, the decimal just slides left and right. That's it. So this system right here, the imperial system, comes from um, Europe, actually. But Europe doesn't use this anymore. <laughs> they use the metric system because they realize this system is terrible, right? So, but we still use it, right, because we brought it over. Whoever came over from Europe brought it with them, and we stick with it. And actually, the, the measurement of a foot used to be based on, like, the, the length of the king's foot at that time. So it changed depending on who the king was. And so it was just, it's stupid. But we still use it, all right? We still use it. Um, so what we want to be able to do right now is we're going to talk about, first we're going to talk about met metric system and how you make conversions within the metric system. And that is pretty easy to do. And then we're going to talk about the imperial system and how you make conversions within the imperial system. And then we're going to talk about how you convert from one system over to the other. So if something is given in metric, can you, or in the metric system, can you get it over to imperial or the other way around, all right? So let's start with the metric system. And the great thing about the metric, like I just said, is everything is, is based on the same sort of table. And that's what this note here is. When it comes to metric, you have what is, what is referred to as your base unit. Okay, so that might be meters, grams, or liters. So meter, a meter is a measurement of what? Length. And then what about a gram? Gram is a measurement of weight. 
And actually, it's, it's actually mass, not weight, but we'll just go with it, okay? So that's how much something weighs is grams. Meter is a measurement of how long something is. How about capital L? This stands for liter. And this is the measurement of volume. And that's how much some container can hold. You know, you have a gallon of milk, the amount of milk in there, that's a measurement of volume. But in the metric system, you, we use liters. You go buy a three liter of soda, right? But you buy a gallon of milk. Two different measurement systems, right? We're all messed up over here in the United States. Um, when you're driving down the road and you look at your speedometer, most speedometers are in what? Miles per hour, but usually most of the gauges will also have in there what? Kilometers per hour. Okay, so what we do is we start with the base unit. And then what we do is we just take this base unit and either make it bigger or smaller. So if you have one meter, then if you put 10 of them side by side, 10, you know, take a meter, that's, let's say that's a meter, and then you do another one, another one. If you take 10 of them total, 10 meters, then you will have a decameter, okay? And if you take 10 of those decameters, add them together, you will have, uh, sorry, too far, you will have a hectometer. So instead of writing meter, let's, let's use these prefixes. So M would stand for one meter, right? And then decameter, D-A-M, dam, right? If you write D-A in front of the M, then this would represent 10 meters. Okay, and then if you have a hectometer, that's H in front of the M, that's what? 100 what? That would be 100 meters, or you could say it's 10 of those, right? So this is 10 dams, or you could say 100 meters, right? So one meter is one meter, one dam is 10 meters, one hectometer is 100 meters. What's the next one up? Kilo? So you write K in front of M. So a, kil a, kil a kilometer, right, a kilometer, kilometer, is 10 what? It's 10 of those hectometers. Or if we want to go back to our base unit, how many? A thousand meters. But the key to this is that to move from one to the other, all you're really doing is just taking the decimal point on meter and moving it, right? So like if I move that to the right once, I have, I have this one. If I move that to the right twice, I have 100. If I move it to the right three times, I have 1,000. So sliding along this scale from left to right really just is moving decimal points, which is super convenient, super easy to do. Now we can go the other way. This was making the meters bigger. But we can also cut the meters and make them smaller. So if I take a meter and I cut it into 10 pieces, each piece is called a decimeter. Take each of those and cut them into 10 pieces, that's a centimeter. Each of those into 10 pieces, we have millimeter, and then we can keep on going. This actually takes a jump, doesn't it? Because this is cutting it you know, three times. It's cutting it once, twice, three times. This one is out at six. So that's what micro means. You're taking one one millionth of a meter. So take a meter, cut it into a million pieces, take one of those little pieces, and that's a micrometer. Alright, so let's just do a problem with this. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you something in metric and I'm gonna ask you to convert it to something in metric. Alright, so let's let's just do this. I'll bring these down so I can work with them here. These metric conversions are the easiest conversions to do. I think, I hope you will agree with that. If I want to go and take uh, 0.58 centimeters and convert it to meters, how do I do that? So, yeah, you can go back up to this table and, and you're going from centimeters to back to what? What do we want? Meters? So I want to go from here to here, right? I'm going to go from centimeters over to meters. So which way did I move on my chart if I'm going to go that way? 
to left, how many places? Three places. One, One two. two places, right? Two places to the left. That's what I'm going to do with the decimal. I'm going to move it two places to the left. So what was it? Point, 0 0.58, right? Centimeters, right? Isn't that what it was? Yes. If I want to make that, convert that into meters, right? Then I'm just going to move this one, two, three places to the left. Fill zeros in there, 0 0.00058. There we go. We're done. Super clean. Yes. Did I move it too many places? I, I did. One, two. Sorry, only two places. Thank you, thank you. Sorry, I went too many. All right. Now, can somebody please just give me that in scientific notation? What is that in scientific notation? 5.8 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. So this is an acceptable answer, but while we're talking about scientific notation, we'll go here. All right. Let's do another one. Number two. What if we're trying to go take 4.7 kilograms into grams, right? So again, we can just go to our chart. We want to go from kilo to our base unit gram, right? So we are going to have to move one, two, three to the right. And that's it. We'll be done. So for this one, I'm going to take the 4.7. And I'm going to go three, one, two, three to the right. Put zeros there. So 4700 zero, zero grams. What is that in scientific notation? 4.7 times 10 to the, so we had to go 1, 2, 3, put it back there, so third power. <coughs> let's, do, let's do number 6. I think 6 is the next one that's somewhat interesting. 0.72 kilometers to, what is this, mm? Let me scroll back up. 0.72 kilometers. I mean, yeah, 0.72 kilometers. And I want to convert that into mm. So what's mm? Millimeters. Millimeters. So on our chart, millimeters is right here, isn't it? This is our millimeters. So m with m would be mm. And kilometers, we're starting here. So we're going to be moving one, two, three four, five, six places to the right. So we're going to move this decimal place six places to the right. So 0.72, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So 7200, zero, 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 zero. so 720,000 millimeters. We won't do that to the scientific, we'll just leave it. So. Pretty straightforward conversions? Mm -hmm. Yes? Is there a table that would go with that? I would provide you this. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you to memorize it. I'll give you the table. All right, now, <clears throat> what about our, our imperial system? So let's talk about our imperial system. Let's do some conversions in our imperial. What if you have 5.25 yards and you want to convert that over to inches? Well, guess how we have to do this? We have to do the proportions. There's no easy, simple moving decimal places. We have to use all the proportions th that we need in order to get us from yards to inches. 
So there's things that we actually need to, to know here. Do we know anything about yards? Anything? Three feet are, is a yard. You'd have to kind of know that. Three feet is a yard. So I'll put it this way. One yard is equal to three feet. Okay, do you know anything about the relationship between inches and feet? Twelve. One foot is twelve inches, right? So remember, for each of these, we can set up two proportions. Right? We can do one yard over three feet or three feet over one yard. This is what we started class with. We can do the same thing here. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go 5.25 yards over one times, now someone help, well, let's see. Danny, Danny, did I call Danny? Yeah, you're right. Close. That's right, okay. Gia, where's Gia? Gia? Um, what should I multiply that by? This is what I started out with this over one, and now we have these two pieces of information. One, three, three. one yard and three foot. So which one goes where? Does the yard go on top or the bottom? Or the yard goes on the bottom because you want it to cancel, right? So I'm going to take this. I'm going to write three feet on top, one yard on the bottom. And then those yards will cancel, right? Okay. Do you want to keep going? No? Okay. That's fine. Jared? Did I call Jared? No? Jared? No, you've already replied today, but may as well finish this off. Uh, you would put feet on the bottom? Feet on the bottom. You want this to go away, right? And you want it to become inches. So you're going to use the second one. You're going to put the one foot on the bottom. Let's go one foot like that. And then the 12 inches on top? and then the feet are going to go away. Okay, so do you all understand? This is the beginning of class. We have two equivalence relationships. We can set up proportions either way with these. There's two different versions of this, two different versions of that. We use what we need to make our units cancel. All right, so then we multiply. We're going to go this times this times this and divide all that by what? One. 189, even? Okay, so 189 inches. So in the imperial system, to get from one unit to the other is a lot more difficult than the metric, right? So why don't we switch over like Europe did, basically the rest of the world? <coughs> Money? Money? Yeah, I think it would be expensive, wouldn't it? But you would have to start from the ground level, like you would have to start when kids are first learning numbers, you would have to just throw out the imperial system, for, right? Because like we all have an idea right now, if I told you you hit a brick wall at 40 miles per hour, we all understand that's going to be probably painful, right? As opposed to saying you hit a wall at <clears throat> 30, 300 centimeters a second. Like we don't have an idea of what you, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't have any concept of that. We would have to start from a very early age understanding the idea of a meter. And then from there, we would be okay. But you have, you have to hit the reset button on the whole thing. So that would be, that'd be challenging. Um, all right, so that's it. Um, let's, let's do another one. Uh, no, I think we're good. Let's try and convert from one system to the other. All right, we're going to try and go from metric to imperial or the other way around. So how about this? How about let's convert 21.5 kilometers into um, miles. Now let's keep something in mind here. All right, I don't want us to lose sight of something, all right? And that is this. Twenty one point five kilometers to miles. Twenty one point five kilometers is equal to thirteen point three five nine miles. Okay, this is the world we live in. We can do this with a computer. In fact, you know, when we're doing conversions in the medical field, you know, doctors that are having to do prescriptions for people and drugs that 
you might give to a child or an adult that might kill them if you give too much of it, right? Like, they will go to a computer to do the conversion. They are not going to sit there and do it by hand, right? So we have to keep in perspective. Like, we really wouldn't do any of this by hand. The process, though, I guess, is the thing we're trying to learn here, right? So well, I already had the answer, 13 point something, right? But let's see how we get to that. Let's, let's appreciate the, the challenge of it. Do we have anything that connects kilometers to miles that you know off the top of your head? Like you knew 12 feet and a fo uh, 12 inches and a foot, right? But do you know how many kilometers there are in a mile? Probably not. So you're going to need some sort of reference table. And that will be provided on the test. And this is what I will provide you. This is in your notes. It gives all the conversions that you need for these problems. So you can see here for length, we have a way to get from inches to centimeters, right? Imperial to metric, feet to inches, right? We already know that. That's imperial to imperial. Yard to feet, that's imperial to imperial. Mile to feet, imperial to imperial. Foot to meter is imperial to metric, right? Mile to kilometer is imperial to metric. So we have to look at this table and then somehow use it for the problem we, I just put up. How, what did I put up? What was it? 21.5 kilometers equals how many miles? So you look at this thing and you say, do I have, do I have a um, equivalence relationship that will work off of this? So do we? Yes. Yep. We have that one mile is equal to 1.609. I'm going to use every decimal here. 3, 4, 4 kilometers. And from that, I can set up two proportions, can't I? Two different proportions. So I'm going to try and start by going 21.5 kilometers. Tanisha? OK. Tanisha, I'm going to start with this. And what next? I'm putting you on the spot. It's a, you know, sorry about that. Over one, right? You're going to put this over one, and then multiply by what? So, Tanisha, what are you going to use in order to get those kilometers to go away and the miles to appear? On the bottom. So you put the 1.609344 kilometers on the bottom, and on top goes what? One mile, right? One mile. One mile, miles, whatever. And there, your, your kilometers will cancel, and then you just multiply straight, up, straight across. But look at on this one. You have to multiply across, which gives you 21.5. But you still have to divide by 1.609344, and this will be in miles. Understand, everyone? 21.5 divided by 1.609344. So 13.359 miles. Let's do one more where it's not as clean and easy to do. One more of these. How about 4,378 centimeters? No, let's not do that. Let's do millimeters is how many miles? So what you want to do here is you want to start thinking of a, of a way you can get from one to the other, you, like almost like a path that you're going to follow. So we somehow need to get from millimeters over to miles. So you look at this, is there anything that connects millimeters and miles directly? No, right? There's nothing here that does millimeters and miles. But there is a way to get from millimeters to what? You can get from millimeters to centimeters. You can also get, 
and, and then from there we could go to inches, couldn't we? And then from inches we could go to feet, and from feet we could go to miles, right? That's one way. We could also go millimeters to what? How about just meters? Or we could go kilometers and then kilometers to mile. Or we could go millimeter to meter and then meter to foot and then foot to mile. There's, see, there's like all these different ways you, you can go through this. So how would you like to proceed? I, I don't care. Just, let's just do one. 